Hey, party people, you're here on Grand Theft Audio. This is Jake Belcher. And I'm Brand Thoman. And we are coming at you live on Zinner.tv. Live from Hollywood. Live from Hollywood, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are, um, okay, so people who've been watching or listening to us for a long time know mm -hmm. that we used to come from Hollywood Boulevard. Indeed. Which was uh, just, uh, you know, three blocks up the street. It sure and was. The uh, nightlife and the surroundings out there were crazy. Right. What a difference three blocks makes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, even crazier down here, right? Like uh, trannies and... Um, no, dude, I think it was pretty new, pretty hey, look, wacky. Uh, I'll tell you this. It was busier up there. Yes. But down here, every person has a crazier story. Uh, okay, you're right. The severity of the yes. craziness yes. And, and the insanity that ensues is yes. definitely grander they've on a grander been, scale. They've uh, been pushed off the main drag. Right. You know, and now they're down here to Santa right. Monica. There, there was the quantity. Down here is the quality. I don't know sure, if you call reverse it quality. quality yeah. You know, like, but uh, all the entertainment you could possibly need. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are coming at you live from Hollywood. Uh, we've been all over this town and yep. um, all over the internet. Uh, we actually have someone who's going to be joining us later that used to be our hallway mate. Sure. At uh, Radio Titan. Hallway which, neighbor, um, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Had him on for a whole bunch of different fun adventures. Can't wait to get uh, Mr. Patrick Hampton back in. So, yeah, it's going to be a blast. It was yeah, good to see be him. Fun, man. So. Uh, so uh, we had a great show last night. Yes, we certainly we did. We should tell people to go to Zinna.tv and um, watch last night's episode of Ultimate Jam Night Live from the Whiskey. That's right. It was their uh, that 70s jam show, uh, which was just great. Honestly, the shows keep getting better and yeah, better. They do, man. Uh, I mean, I, I thought the Pink Floyd tribute that we did two weeks ago was a lot of fun. Last night was was right up there. I think I think Pink Floyd still does have that uh, that top spot. Cause I, I think, I think I, so. That, that's accurate. Uh, but, th I mean... But last night we had like um, Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses yes. out there. I mean, that's yes. effing so cool. And so many other people from big bands. And you guys got to come check it out. If you live in L.A., come out to The Whiskey on uh, Tuesday nights. No cover. Yeah, that's free, man. Yeah. All they ask is you buy a couple of drinks or something to eat. That's not too hard. Yeah, it's not bad at all. And you get to see like real rock stars who, you know, live in Los Angeles, but they're on, they're not on tour right now. Right. Or they're not, um, doing whatever it is, and they come on by, and they they play the best music uh, you've ever heard live they, for the it, price. It is, it is honestly the tightest jam session yeah. uh, that I have had the pleasure of getting to see. Now, I haven't seen many of them, but this place, I mean, these 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 people are pros, and they go up there, and they, they put their sure, and all I'll, into man, it. And I'll vouch that uh, it is a jam. They are not going out and rehearsing these songs. Nope. You know, nope. they, they get together, and some of these people have never met met before. They've never played together. Not together. The, I'm sure they do a little rehearsal beforehand because I know they have to know the song that they're going to be sure. playing. But it's it, there's nothing. There's no collaboration they're beforehand. They're not together and be like, okay, you're going to come in on the third. Bop, bop, bop. You right, know, it's all just um, live, and it's and it's t it's a tight sounding group every si for every single song. And so. I think it also helps that uh, as we've now broadcast more of these shows, we become more comfortable with what we're doing. And yeah. Now the presentation's getting better and better to right. the point where I'm really telling you guys, you should go out and watch these sh these episodes now. Like before, I just kind of told you they exist, but like now I'm saying, go out and watch them, man. They're good, you know. Like, they're really good. Yeah. So, I agree. So. Uh, we got that, that. Okay, so that's what's going on in here. Uh, what's going on in, like, the greater world? Like, uh, what's the big news story this week to you? What's the biggest news story? Uh, I, I guess it would have to be the whole Hillary oh, yeah. collapsing yeah. Uh, on her way to the motorcade after the 9-11 or during the 9-11 uh, ceremony where she has now been diagnosed with pneumonia. I think she was diagnosed a few days earlier, and they right. used that as an, as well, an excuse okay. later. I mean, I've heard so many just terrible things about this. Like, okay, I know I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, and I think that what's being told to us most of the time is horse shit. But there's so much stuff going on on this one issue that yeah. I don't even know where to begin. Okay, so they say that they took her to her daughter Chelsea's apartment after yeah. she had this fainting episode. Right. It turns out, like, it's, it, it is her apartment. But she doesn't actually live at that apartment. And this apartment is actually a medical facility that just has doctors sitting there. Like, it's it's basically Hillary Clinton's hospice care for the end of her life. 
I mean, there's this I, really yeah man. but this is this is just what you're this this is confirmed now or this it is, is what you, it is confirmed that that company exists at that address <laughs> in that apartment number that they say that she was at for her uh, that daughter. is registered in her daughter's name yes. or, or rented at yes. least in her daughter's yes. name. yes yes they, 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 great it's her apartment but it doesn't mean that she stays there or lives there now I, I don't find this to be too surprising I believe that a lot of people who are Wealthy, which I believe the Clintons at this point in, sure. in their lives. They're have, beyond the word wealthy. Yes. They're yes. rich. They're crazy rich. Yes. And absolutely. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if many, many important and, you know, monetarily valuable people have a, have a place like that near their home where sure. if something was to happen to them, if they weren't feeling well, that is where they would go instead of to a doctor's office, mainly because it can potentially keep the press away from it. So, you know, she has this issue um, where she kind of collapses. They put her in a van. They drive her away. They don't let any press come with her for the next 90 minutes. You know, like, even though she's supposed to have somebody who's assigned to her all the time that's supposed to be there always, like they said, no, you can't come on this one. Right. Uh, She goes to her daughter's apartment, and she comes out two hours later, spry and, like, you know, bouncing around, and this little girl comes running up, and I think they kind of, like, do some, like, Woo! Handshake of okay. like um, you know, importance or something. To like, okay, so that little girl is probably in danger of getting pneumonia, right? You're not supposed to go around touching children if you've got like this disease. Anyways, she comes out alone. She has no fucking like social security or any AIDS now. Like the last time we saw her, she was literally being dragged across the yeah, fucking yeah, world. Yeah, with her sh- with her shoe being left behind. Yeah, because like uh, her ankle turned and the shoe <laughs> rips off. Like <laughs> it's not good. No. Okay, but. Even more, even more possibly uh, conspiracy theorists than the idea that that's not really her daughter's apartment. Right. Like, I hear the idea that we got a Dave situation. You As in the, the, mo- the, the movie Dave. The movie Dave, Okay. Yeah, where they had, like, a body double come With, out. With uh, Kevin Klein. Uh, yeah, Kevin Klein, correct? Yeah. 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 Where he – where – President at the time has a massive stroke. He's but fucking some he's, horny. Oh! Yeah, has a massive stroke, and then they go and get a bo- a person who looks almost hey, exactly like, like him, guy. and he takes over as president. Yes, yeah. I do recall. This. I don't think this girl's gonna take over. I think that she no. just came out for like a one-time appearance. Honestly, like when I looked, when someone told me that, and I went back and I looked at the footage, and I'm like, are we just as dumb that we don't notice these things? Because this lady. Her, her nose is definitely much sharper than, like, the nose I'm right. used to seeing on, on Hillary Clinton. And she's, like, 30 pounds less than the last than, than the lady they dragged into the van. Right. I mean, she, she's, she's smaller, and now she's all happy. And she's, she's moving in a way that I've never seen Hillary Clinton move in. So is that who's in the, in the picture with the little girl? Yes. Is the body double. So, yes. That little girl is in no danger of catching pneumonia from Hillary Clinton because she was nowhere near Hillary Clinton. Huh. I mean, sure, there's pictures everywhere of, like, um, you know, the handshake and the, oh. Or, you don't hear, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my own little conspiracy theory. Great. Perhaps yeah. that really was Hillary Clinton. Yeah. The one that had the problem, a robot that short-circuited, sure. had to go to, a spe- go to her daughter's apartment and was getting repaired. So they said, well, Madam Secretary, you need, you need to get out there. Yeah, that little girl's in no danger. Yeah. But, Madam Secretary, you need to go out there and assure everybody that you're fine. So the real Hillary, that's that's the real one right there that we were just looking at. And that the one that's inside is a robot. That's possible. That's possible. There, there's even there's even more bizarre theories than that, you know. Okay, so there's also the idea that Hillary Clinton is a lizard woman who <laughs> is here to, like, um, you know, have lizard people. That she's an alien of some kind, is she's what you're a, saying? Oh, I don't know if they're aliens. I mean, I don't know if they came from Earth or not. There could be some lizard people who live beneath the crust so that we're not aware of. So is it possible that the Hillary that went into her daughter's apartment then just shed her skin? 30 pounds 30 worth? pounds worth of skin yeah. and, and disease and is gone, and now this is our new healthy former Secretary of State? Very possible. Wow. <laughs> yeah, conspiracy theorists. You, you, they never really end. You know, like they no, get deeper they and never deeper will. and crazier. If you want people to catch on to your uh, conspiracy theory, make a YouTube video. Because YouTube has made it easier than ever to watch, like to um, pass on your crazy, your crazy yeah, ideas. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I got some. Um, yeah, I get crazy conspiracy things from there all the time. I love that stuff. I know you do. You know, I, I just um, 
I'm so sure that most of the time they are not really telling us the truth on the important things. Like, I just don't think that they trust us enough. No. So I wouldn't trust us. No. Nope. If I was in charge, I wouldn't tell us shit. Like, um, you'd all be, you'd, you'd barely know that fire existed if I was in charge. <laughs> <laughs> like, I couldn't trust you with nothing. That's what I say. All right, before we finish up this uh, first segment here and we come back from the other side with Patrick, I want to say uh, congratulations are in order to you at the moment. We have been playing fantasy sports yes, fantasy for many, many years. Indeed. You've never, ever been first place in the league. No, I have not. So no, congratulations. I not. Yes, you know. with, uh, with, a, with a trouncing of my opponent that I, I was quite happy with. I, I'm the only member of the 400-point club so far yeah. this, this, this year. Because usually you're uh, like um, – you know, you're, I'm you're struggling like to get. I'm, yeah, I'm usually struggling to get into the playoffs, and then yeah. I blossom in the playoffs. Sure, I, I have. Do well I, I've later. done well in the playoffs. I mean, last year I came in second place, which what you know, I was I was very pleased with the with the way that you're turned right, out. Right, man. I didn't think about that. You ended up very strong at the end, and now you're number one. So this is just a progression of that chain. Yeah, I hope so. Dang. I hope so. I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to kick you out of the league next year if you're good, because <laughs> I don't need someone else who's good playing against me. Hey, okay. well. That's I Jay brought you in as a patsy, sir, who's supposed know. to roll over and show his tummy and die when I came through charge stabbing everyone. Yes. But then you show that you have guts and determination on your own. And, I, and just that, just the right amount of studying up the players that are out there to, to pick up what I want to do. Bullshit, sir. Yes. I'm very happy that I took. Cam, uh, I did not take Cam Newton as my number I'm one. I'm very pick. happy that we have a commercial break coming up now, and I can stop listening to you brag about how <laughs> great your team is. So, guys, I, I can't listen to any more of this horse shit. Uh, let's go to a commercial it's break. Continue next week. <laughs> it's going to continue next week because I'm going to be two and zero and still in first place. Uh, if, you, if you're two and zero, I may. Um, okay, look, I will figure out something terrible for me to do if you go two and zero. Okay, we're going to come back to the other side with Patrick Hampton and um, enjoy this break. So we'll be back. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> if only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. if someone like... You know, because little groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your. No! <laughs> are you gonna sue me? <laughs> Get politically naughty with Mary Carey Mondays at 4 p.m. Jason Stewart here for Zena TV on the show. Absolutely, Jason Stewart every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Big guests. It's everyone from the gayest to gay to the straightest to straight. David. Uh, He's absolutely Jason, he's absolutely gay, he'll absolutely brighten up. Back here on Grand Theft Audio Radio on Zinna.tv, the name that shall stand the test of time. My name is Jake Belcher. And I'm Brant Thoman. And uh, as I said, we have a, uh, a for the long-term <laughs> listener, you know, the completionist, uh, will be able to go back and remember uh, – we had, when we were uh, down on Hollywood Boulevard, we had, um, <laughs> it wasn't our own building ourselves. We had people who shared the hallways with us. Right. Down the end of our hallway, we had these, um, okay, look, we'll talk about them in a second. Yeah. Um, Mr. Patrick Hampton, Hampton. Hey, Patrick. Hey, thanks for having me, guys, again. It's been a long time, and I'm happy to see you. And I'm very happy to see you, too, man. You know, yeah. like, things just kind of... Uh, disappeared down there at radio titans one day and well, um, same thing with me down there too sure so, yeah. I, yeah you were you were there with like a, an artist guy yeah a painter we're helping trying to uh, get a gallery going up in there and uh have you ever seen anything on that guy since since that time 
Mm, yes and no. Like some yeah. people have been contact, but I had to get away from a, a sure. pretty pr- a situation. Just leave it at that. Sure. Okay. We talked about it on the air at our pl- at our place. Okay. Now, I, now I don't. Now this is not you saying this. This is from our time being there. He told us there were demons in the building. They were <laughs> yeah. coming up out of the lacquer from his floor. Like it, 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 it was. This building was crazy. Like yeah, everybody yeah, in it was nuts. Well, welcome to Hollywood, right? Sure. Welcome to Hollywood. I ended up writing my first two features. Uh, right out there too, which one was award-winning. After I announced it on the show, I was going to be writing the sure. blood of art, and then it became an award-winning script. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, wh- what award? Where did it win an award? I got second place at the Indie Gathering, and oh, it's been accepted in Action on Film Festival, which again, your fault. <laughs> sure, we love Action on Film. Um, Ford Austin brought us in, introduced us to um, Del Weston. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, we've uh, enjoyed them for many years. Yes, Del's amazing, and I'm sure. really grateful that you guys even introduced me to that festival. I, I honestly don't think I've ever met somebody who loves film. As much as Dell does, I, I think mean, he loves filmmakers. You I, know, like it, it, everybody <laughs> that comes through there has a great experience with him. Yes, and they're all interested. Mm-hmm. And it's um, all about cultivating the indie market. Sure. And uh, when we talk about this, uh, Dell and uh, his wife, they literally set up an environment, and it's to teach filmmaking from the grassroots and about just getting the job done. Mm-hmm. This is why people keep going back year and year. And mm-hmm. we're talking about writers too. Some of the best writers in the circuit. Uh, they are the ones that uh, I'm honored to even be on the same list with. As recently this past year, my script, The Drifter VR, was the runner-up for short best short screenplay of the festival. Now, VR is there because you're working in virtual reality, correct? Uh, you know, I dabble in it. I'm getting ready to do a project in virtual sure. reality. I saw right you on. went through like, some training and some classes for it, too. Like, that's totally a direction that uh, I think that everyone has a big interest in. Augmented reality is huge sure. for, uh, for entertainment today, and we're, we're really blessed to just being this time frame of technology change and integration with humans it's it's amazing on the subject of vr real quick um have you so you're out here uh, in la do you have a chance to go to magic mountain and try that new virtual reality roller coaster have you heard about this idea I with, haven't, um, but it's been around forever. VR and like something like that. Uh, I wouldn't mind but, checking out. But now you can ride a roller coaster at the same time, and it's been hooked up to like the same movement that's happening in the in the the game inside. And you're playing a game as you go, so you're getting swung around in VR. It's a really interesting concept. Well, I also just saw this. I think just this week, uh, the commercial for Samsung. They're giving away the VR headset if you buy a brand new phone from them. So what, like the 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 S7, if you buy that. Here you go. Here's a here's a nice little set of goggles for you. Interesting. I don't know why iPhone doesn't go that direction. Okay, so I want to get back to your story then, man. Yep. Okay, so um, <laughs> what happened when you went? How did you leave Hollywood? Like, what happened there? Uh, it was just family reasons. Sure. Uh, I ended up leaving, going to help my brother move into his house in Kansas City. And they just bought their first house and just spend the holidays. I usually would leave L.A. for the holidays and come back and just get my stuff going again. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what was going there, and then I took the opportunity to go to Fort McMurray to solidify my Canadian citizenship. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, my mom was living in Canada anyways, and my mom kind of wanted to stay back in her home country. Mm-hmm. So one of us, and I was the youngest out of three siblings, that had to take the responsibility of you know, being there for mom. Mm-hmm. So you're now a Canadian? Yeah. Oh, I've always been a Canadian. Oh, okay, but this is solidified it. This just made yeah. it like completely official on paperwork that you are. I've been through the systems now. I, you, I can definitely say I am an Albertan boy, true, true adopted. But uh, yeah, um, can, Canada's my home, mm-hmm. and it's always going to be my home, like the United States. I'm, I call myself North American now because I've lived all through North America. Mm-hmm. Sure, that sounds kind of better than a Canadian also. Ha, 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 I got a, ca- a capital C-A-N at the end of it, so why not? Sure. Um, <laughs> you have can in front, you know. It's not It's not Cant-Adian. Can't, it's not Canadian. Canadian? Yeah, Canadian. Well, technically, I'm American-Canadian, so I'm American. You're a can-can. You're Ameri- American-Canadian. <laughs> so you're a can-can dancer. All right, man. Okay, so... I don't know where the right way place to start this journey is on top. Oh, man. Well, let's just get right into it. Like, what's the specific question you want to ask? I'm an open okay. book. Okay, great. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Titans goes away. I don't see you for a while. Yeah. We uh, reconnect on Facebook somehow. And I see, like, were you, like, committed against your will somehow? Yeah. Into, like, a mental health facility? Yeah, and all over marijuana, too. Sure. So, yeah, let's, let's get now this happen. Okay, now, real quick, though. Where does this take place? Fort McMurray, Alberta. Okay. Yeah. Now, we'll go from there, please. Yeah, uh, I'm, you know, taking a break from Hollywood again. Sure. So, I was out here. I was doing the music scene for a minute, uh, working in hip-hop, where my boy Anthrax and I were up in North Hollywood. I built a studio, co-founded Vaudeville, and uh, ended up finding some roots there. But I went back. Um, dealing with some family issues, some financial stresses that happened there. 
but also with marijuana, it's always been medical for me. I've been using it to get me like very level because I've been dealing with bipolar my mm-hmm. whole life. And it got to a point where like I try to keep myself within this this realm to just keep myself emotionally stable. And what happened was, you know, through someone else's insecurities and their dislike for marijuana heavily, and this is the truth of it, it was somebody that just grew up anti-marijuana, didn't like it, didn't understand the benefits of it, and now we're all understanding today, and used uh, a law in Canada, which is suicide prevention, right? And it was just like somebody pushing me to the limit of my emotional stability. So I ended up going to the psych ward, but I knew what was going on the whole time. Interesting thing about it, when I got into it, they ended up just trying to get me admitted. They weren't trying to help me out. They weren't listening to my story. They weren't mm-hmm. listening to anything that was going off. And the cops that saw me before I even went to the hospital, like, you're completely sane and you know what you're talking about. Like, like you know how to make a logical, reasonable decision. You're an adult. Like, we believe in you. So it was just so counterintuitive and it was very pi- it was a very bipolar moment in my mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. I ended up, they threw me into the hospital and within 24 hours, I'm supposed to see a psychiatrist. They were holding me illegally against my will automatically, um, which was really, really uh, upsetting. But what happened was I had the 24 hours passed, and I'm like, what time is it? Let me out. Like, I'm going to go to a psychiatrist mm-hmm. or a psychologist. I'd rather deal with psychologists because psychiatrists are all about pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and Canada has a horrible, horrible psych- psychiatric history, too. It's, it's really one of the worst you could ever imagine. Where you know, electric shock therapy was is everything state sponsored there also? Like, uh, do you get charged for your for that type of therapy? medical? Is all yeah, state sponsored. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I ended, ended up going there, and they told me no, I couldn't leave, even though within 24 hours legally they had to let me go. And after they went and you know check the time, everything else, the doctor just you know, Wallace is in, just all nonchalantly, whatever. And I'm like, yo, man, like you're wasting my time. Understand, I'm not one to bullshit. I'm real. I'll tell you my life because it's very unbelievable. And you don't fuck with me. So, you know, he ended up, I'm not going to let you leave until you start taking these pills. I'm like, no, man. I honestly, I've been monitoring my attitude and honoring my life with a good diet, walking a lot. And also marijuana has helped dramatically in my mm-hmm. life. Uh, so he's like, no, marijuana's a drug. It's, it's a drug. It's a drug. You're a drug addict and you're stuck here. So I ended up dealing with the dance. I'm like, I'm not taking the pills. I'm not going through that side of things. And ended up fighting with these people about my own health. And all they really wanted to do was get me on drugs. Sure. They just want to make you a customer for the rest of their life that you're coming and getting your Adderall or whatever type of bullshit they try to get you on. Uh, The questions I asked, and uh, there's some of the stuff on on, uh, SoundCloud. If you go to soundcloud.com backlash channel PH, you actually see some of my sessions I recorded secretly because they were trying to manipulate the conversation and drive the conversation and make me sound like and admit that I was an addict. I'm like, guys, like I smoke weed. I get it. It helps me out a lot, but understand why. And I'm also very, very intelligent too. So, so these are people who believe that there is an addiction to marijuana and that's what y- you suffer from it. And, well, yeah. That's, that's what they're trying to say. Yeah. And I was using it for, you know, I was actually using it for a band aid, and <laughs> it, it was kind of one of those things that it was like kind of self-discovered. Hey, honest, for me. Honestly, dude, even if it is a band aid, <laughs> like to make things better, how is that Band-Aid, uh, you know, worse than the capsule Band-Aid that they want to exactly. put you on? Right. And that I mean, was my point. They're saying, well, it's a yeah. drug. Yeah, so is what you're offering me. No, we call that a pharmaceutical. It's the same fucking thing. It's the same exactly. thing. Exactly. Exactly. And that was that was the point of it. And when I was even talking to them, I even found out that they had shares in pharmaceutical companies that they were subscribing. Of course. Of totally, course totally they did. Like, you know, that is uh, professionally unmoral. Sure. So it ended up becoming this battle with the hospital trying to do a cover-up of you know, somebody that was illegally against their will, rightfully, ended up having to go. And I had no cell phone. I had no Canadian cell phone. I had nothing there besides the, the phone in the hospital. And, uh, you know, I, I called up the U.S. consulate and, uh, you know, ended up really, you know, they, they didn't even believe me. No one believed me about what was going on. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, this is a true story. Like, I'm not, I'm not crazy. This is a true story. And this is the real story you'll ever hear about bullshit. And I ended up surviving it. I went through it. I got a lawyer when I was there. I ended up going all the way to Queen's Bench. They escalated my case to forcibly emit pharmaceuticals to me through ejections. So technically, you know, I dealt with brain damage and chemical torture because of reactions, because emotionally, like, I didn't want it in my system anyways. So they really just didn't care about my health, and it was really obvious. I felt bad for the nurses. Uh, I have... It, but when I got to Queen's Bench, literally, it was the most embarrassing thing about it. They didn't even show up to court. 
Wow. They didn't even show up. If I, that doesn't tell you that they know they're they, wrong, then nothing will. They thought, well, the judge just walked up and told my lawyer, it's like, oh, by the way, just out of the first first little things that are right there, he was within his rights. He was legally and liably within his rights, and he knew exactly what's going on. And within it, this is, this is completely, you know, not right. So they ended up basically throwing me to the streets, and I ended up having to, you know, use my story and go through some public programs to get myself back on my feet. Well, I'm glad that you've um, got back on your feet, yeah. get yourself creative again, and start uh, writing and um, doing all the things you do. Uh, I know you said you have anthrax with you. Yeah, and my um, anthrax. So um, let's go to ourselves to uh, a break here, and um, we'll bring him in, and we'll talk about you know currently what's going on and uh, that type of jazz. It's funny enough, this is going back to my past on top of it before any of that stuff even happened. So it's just how the world just wraps around. Crazy, man. I know. All right. Uh, uh, we'll be back after this commercial break. And, um, you know, uh, two minutes, guys. I mean, is that so long to wait? Damn. Uh, no, never. Yeah. Lemmy story for me? An amazing one? Everything he does is amazing. The guy puts snarl in the metal. Come on. Big heart. Love that guy. That guy was the real deal in every way. Lemmy was just a class act. So thank you, Lemmy. No way I was gonna miss a nice tribute to the Lemmeister, man. Let's hear it for Lemmy! Scream for Lemmy! Can you feel the energy in the room? Lemmy lives on! God bless Lemmy, and uh, he will live on through all of us. To the spirit and memory of Lemmy! Long live Lemmy, my brothers and sisters! And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. plus one, like, you know, because a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your <laughs> No! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. <laughs> from home and you're on the street you've been ripped off you've been used and you could be killed there is a way out there is a way off the street not tomorrow but now runaway hotline will get you off the street call runaway hotline toll free anytime day or night runaway hotline gets your message to those who care call now and get off the street yeah, girls, like, uh, it is important. Like, you don't have to live with abuse. You can um, call up and, like, I got a couch. I got um, I got a hammock in the backyard. Like, you don't have to, like, uh, live in those types of situations. I have, I have all the Taco Bell you can eat. Man, that's a real chivalrous man. You're, I know, man. you're such a gentleman, Jay. All the Taco Bell gentleman. you want, you know, like, uh, don't get anything too spicy, though, because there could be repercussions later. Oh. Stick with mild flavored things. Um, but <laughs> other than that, you can have all the Taco Bell you want. It's very nice. <laughs> all right, we're back here on Grand Theft Audio. This is Jake Belcher. And I'm Brant Thoma. Uh, we're continuing to be with... Patrick Hampton. And joining Patrick now, um, this is gentleman named Anthrax. How you doing, man? How you doing today, brother? Good, good, good to see you here. Um, so any, anybody friend who's a friend of Patrick is a uh, welcome person here. So um, Thanks for having us, man. Anthrax, I've uh, been through Hollywood streets together. So it's been uh, quite interesting. We ended up uh, meeting in North Hollywood. And uh, now we're getting ready to work some music together. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got this project coming out called The 1%. Oh, yeah. my God, man. 
we just started working on these tracks. Uh, it's just one called Broken Promise. I had to, I had to yeah. really sit down and, and fill my boy out in his artistry. Boy, the, the guy talented. I'm really blessed to, uh, I've run into these people and really like we've met legends along the way, both of us together, and they've, they've given us the thumbs up uh, through the music, which is great. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed that even uh, my buddy of mine, just like, here's my song. I'm like, what? And now we're looking at hit the studio up and getting yeah, it recorded soon. Man. I have some I have some strong feelings about the one percent. Um, yeah. Is this is this a a, a positive thing about? Okay, it does have to do with like the the financial one percent. So uh, this is a, one of my projects that um, I'm actually getting ready to go into production pretty yeah. soon, finishing yeah. development. It's a story about two hip hop artists uh, going through trying to get investors in LA and going through the hustle and grind. You know, the lawless life of the one percent. You're going through the streets and you're going to the top parties of the night, mm -hmm. and you know. That's I've been doing some stand-up lately about being one of the one percent people. I think there's some hilarious things that I can <laughs> throw into this. It's, it's, it's true, man. Idea, it, you know, like it's the elite, a, huh? the yeah, elite, the one percent, yeah. the people who could jet ski at night. Yeah, I just you know, like how rich you have to be to jet ski at night. You have to have people who are like around making light for you and stuff. Like, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I've man. never done it. No way. <laughs> man. Like, that is rich. You yeah. know. Well, the idea too is to uh, kind of show Hollywood in the true light, but also bring people back to Hollywood. Or people are, are like, are kind of burnt out. In my opinion, you see a lot of jobs leaving uh, the market. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm coming from Canada, right? And we're talking about wow. Vancouver being one of the busiest markets right now. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's one of those things where I, like, I see my friends working. They're some of the most talented artists in the city, and I want to help support the best way I know, and that's doing me. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, exciting. Uh, so, uh, what do you do here in LA, man? Oh man, I live out here, man. I do music. I'm a recording artist mm -hmm. by the name of Anthrax out of Pasadena, California. Pasadena stand up. Represent? All like 100, huh? It's your boy. Anthrax. <laughs> Pasadena. Not Pasadena. Ah. Hey, man, that pas thing, Pasadena in hip hop is only famous for like one thing, right? Skirt! Let's stop there. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 seriously, right? Oh, I, the only thing that I can think of with Pasadena is Pasadena. Where you at? You know, for like California Dr. Dre, love. right? In yeah, California man. Love. Yeah, like, well, you know, California. If I may add, you know, Pasadena, it's been overlooked. It's the seventh most wealthiest city. I don't know if in the United States, uh, maybe the world, right? But the greatest talent I think come from my city. You know, the bloody rare rose, the Rose Bowl city in the house. Pasadena stand Shoot. up, huh? Hell yeah. Well, we okay. So we grew up pretty close to there. Like we were both some La Cunada boys. So well, like. I, uh, right, basically, you know, on the other side of the Rose Bowl, you know. Yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, it's a good area, man. Yeah, Actually, sure. I'm going to Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I was gladiator. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I know about the gladiators. Won many championships on that field. But oh, yo, right. man, Pasadena Panthers. So oh, it was funny right. enough. Like, well, I'm, I'm trying to think. Like, one of our favorite moments, like one of my favorite moments with the Anthrax, when we met Sugar Free. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man, I was oh yeah. Like a, yeah oh yeah. Sugar Free, Sticky Fingers. We didn't work with some artists and then seen some badass. Yeah. Bennett. Big influence. Black Tove, yeah. I like Black Tove. I like I like the when we spent time with Black Tove. But my favorite man. was Sugar Free, man. Sugar Free yeah. is a, is a, is yeah, a yeah. he's a good dude, man. He's a good dude. Misunderstood, but very understood. If you I'm, get what I'm saying, I'm a big right? fan. Yeah, he's really oh, he's, 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 <laughs> <Sure. laughs> yeah, he's great, man. Just see this face, you know, see one of his idols pop up. It's just sure. like, but Sticky though. Remember when I got the freestyling for Sticky and he yeah. was. Sticky know who Anthrax is. Shout out Mad 100, yeah. Sticky and him. Shout, Shout out. Fingers, you know, those are the boys out. now. And it's, it's amazing enough. Sticky's given, us some, uh, given me some amazing career advice, too, along the journey. So it was just like, we're blessed. So we, I, we've had a chance. I, I was, I've always enjoyed the music. Right. But I was fairly woefully ignorant on, like, the personalities in the scene. <laughs> then we started working on Tuesday night shows here at the Zinna.TV family of shows. The Block. We, the Block. <laughs> and we started right. producing shows for, like, the Outlaws and um, the Money B, uh, Money B, and um, the Bone Thugs and Harmony and stuff. It, those guys, very smart, very um, they're very well spoken. They don't seem to get caught up into the same thing that a lot of the guests that come in, into that show. Yeah. There is a insane amount of like <laughs> hatred towards like the gay community in hip hop like man they just need to let people be people amen. and embrace That's people for what they are the world is evolving and I can I can, I can agree with almost everything well, that goes to, on in like the hip hop. Like I I, I love I love everything. I you, love almost all of it. Oh. But like that one issue is, is like um got out of control. Let's be honest though. Like you, if you really look at it culturally enough, like there's a lot of homosexuality happens in the prison. So like that's a lot of fucking demons for a sure. lot of people. Mm -hmm. So Straits like as well. Don't you know yeah. 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 <laughs> this is like you know a lot of people, and especially in this industry, they take advantage of uh 
the weakness and they take advantage for their own own ego and their own self gain. Right. And that's where it's like I don't think it's more about homosexuality. I think it's more about those egotistical people that really fucking it's like one bad seed can fucking ruin I, a I bunch. I just realized it was a lot of fronting because like there was these guys who would come in here. They would talk about how much they hate uh, fags and stuff. Right. And then we'd go out onto the patio. And like this guy would be like pimping like young boys, you know, <laughs> trying to make some dough, man. Yeah, it's it's so that bad. messed up, and that's where this crazy thing about checking out where, no bueno, where you know, no bueno, where, where the start of you know the soul of music comes from too. And that was part of my journey of researching the script one percent. And that's not, not just that. If you if I may add, man, you just got to be real with yourself. Life, amen. Life, you got to be honest with yourself. People don't know how to be honest with themselves, sure. man. Mm-hmm. Jake, man, it's it's a real thing, you know. Just accept who you are. And let that be that. And you will let your light shine. Uh, 100% true, man. If you're starting to think about how you're going to please other people or how you can make sure that, like, um, you know, everything is perfect in your life and that you have, you know, the right uh, shoe and the right cut and everything is, right. is perfect, you know, then you know, who you're really living for? So, someone else. You can't even right. tell if, like, that person even likes you. They could just be, you know, putting up with you because you're there. You got to like yourself. All you got to do is maintain once you know who you are. Don't lose yourself in this world because you will get lost. Life. <laughs> yeah. Good advice, man. Mm-hmm. Good advice. I think it's the hardest thing about this journey of uh, you know, being an artist too and we see a lot of those personalities is that you have to be that strong personality to guide people and people take influence from you. And this is where we see a lot of artists uh, misusing their powers or ignorantly not understanding their powers that they have to right. change people's lives every day. Agreed, man. Yeah, yeah. I, we, I just saw so much of it. Like it became like a thing every week, where it's like, it's like there's some badge of courage that comes along with man. being like, um, I hate gay people <laughs> or something. Like no. it's really weird. I, I know that this isn't your platform. You guys didn't uh, sit down with me beforehand. Like, hey, let's make sure that we sit down and talk about hating gay people. Like oh, that man. never happened. <laughs> no, the only really? thing about it, like we're two very accepting people. I grew up uh, next to a Gunkwo, Maine, one of the top gay, gay vacation spots in in the United States, mm. in Maine. So like you know, for me it's like I have friends that have been gay my whole life, and like, and I've seen I've seen really the perceptions of everything. You know, I think part of what you just said there uh, reminded me of something. Like all of, like anybody who's a, a rapper or like a like an entertainer or something, they've had to be around a lot of like pretty flamboyant people I mean, as they've grown up. That's the music scene. The it matrix. really is. It's the matrix, man. You got it. It's not <laughs> yeah. just music. It's it's the world. You know, like I said in Take the beginning, the blue, you, know, you know, it's all about evolution. You know, what I'm saying I don't do that gay shit, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. I don't hate on nobody doing that gay sure, shit. Because that, that's their shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be gay, that's like one less pussy you're going to be in for, like, for me to try to get into. You're the best women in the world. Some of the best women. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job. A lot of it is like, is uneducated, not educated. There's a lack of wisdom for, for younger men. I mean, when I was in my, my late teens and early 20s, when I got hit on by a gay guy, I hated it. Like, what the fuck are you doing? How dare you do that to me? Now it's like, dude. I appreciate it, but no, thank you. You it's, know, it's it's a type of thing. Yeah, where like evolution. you come to accept, you come to realize that this is just another human being on my side here. Amen. And I, I like him for who he is. It's it's it has nothing to do with his sexual preference. He can hit on me all he wants. I know at the end of the day, I'm not going anywhere near that. Yeah. Right. Uh, and yeah. he can think that it might. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to worry well, about it. Man, so. I think that we have a really horrible society of teaching sexual knowledge and teaching how to, you know, interact with the other sex sure, too. And I think this is yep. shame. Sex is shame. It, that's, this is really a problem with society today. And this is where, like, you know, we look at how we treat women. It's the same exact fucking way. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's time for us to look past the problems and understand people are people and we need to respect it and let people do it themselves instead of oppressing them. And we are doing it either from self, self labeling to not putting a hand out, you know? Sure. I know one thing. Jay, when the hell are you and Brent going to get on my SoundCloud, that Anthrax? Oh, sure. At SoundCloud, A-N-T-T-H-R-A-X-X. <laughs> can you guys find that in there? And maybe we can come back with, like, a uh, part of this track on the on the other side of our uh, break and stuff. Oh, that'd be lovely, yeah, though. Oh, man. It's yeah. your boy, man. I'm out here swinging with my good boy. stuff, Pat. too. Man, Pat Ham, Pat Chakra, you <laughs> understand me? We got a lot of titles for this dude. He a rock star, okay. a triple threat, all that. Where thing. can people like learn more about you guys before we go to break? Man, all you got to do is peep us out on our. Well, you can peep me out on Facebook and get me at the Instagram, but the Facebook is A-N-T-T-H-R-A-X-X. That's Anthrax, and I'm from Pasadena, <laughs> California. And you can find me, again, at Channel PH. I, nothing ever changes with me. Sure. You know, I try to find my center. Dig it, guys. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to our uh, last break of the show, and um, we're going to come back to the other side with some of Anthrax track. 
and uh, we're going to talk about uh, our holidays because that's what we do here on Grand Theft Audio. So uh, give us two more minutes. And, what um, is the holiday? You know, uh, we've been talking about like the holiday. Like, what is today's holiday? It, like, there's always some weird thing to celebrate. We have something today, so we've been doing it for uh, nine years or something. Yeah, yep. it's amazing. I love that part of your show. Sure. Well, well, what that we'll thing go, huh? Sure, sure. Okay, we'll come back. Jeremy, and you're watching T Radio V, Radio N TV. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Thank you, Ron. Excellent. Hey, everybody, Sean Astin here. You may know me from Goonies, Rudy, The Lord of the Rings, but actually, my calling is as a political radio show host. So I am proud to announce that I am bringing my show, Vox Populi Radio right here to T-Radio V, Radio in TV, Thursdays, 12 to 2, live. Did I say that it's live? Live. Call in, tweet in, check in. It's going to be your show. You ran from home and you're on the street. You've been ripped off, you've been used, and you could be killed. There is a way out. There is a way off the street. Not tomorrow, but now. Runaway Hotline will get you off the street. Call Runaway Hotline, toll free, anytime, day or night. Runaway Hotline gets your message to those who care. Call now and get off the street. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically no naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> if only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. if someone like, you know, because a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, when I, I walked in, you shoved my head in your <laughs> No! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get politically naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. Anthrax out of uh, yeah. Pasadena. Well, well, what that thing do? <laughs> uh, uh, one more time. Uh, where can people like uh, find out more about you, man? Man, you can hit me up on Facebook. That's Anthrax. A N T T H R A X X. Or go to my SoundCloud. Anthrax. Spell it just like that. Push surf. It's many duplicated, yeah. but none of me. A lot more coming out too, which is great. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. Yeah, thank you for having us on the show. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so here on uh, Grand Theft Audio with uh, Jake Belcher. 
And Brant Thoman, sorry. Uh, we do the same thing here on uh, GTA every week. We talk about holidays. Yeah, it's one of my favorite, yes. my favorite parts of this. That's right. Uh, today's September 14th. We only have one holiday to celebrate today, uh. so we, we have barely anything to, to pick from. Uh, but today is National Cream Filled Donut Day. Nice some biggity. Boston cream. What's your favorite, guys? What's sure. your favorite? Man, I got to have the, the original glaze or the chocolate bar you understand sure those mm-hmm. are good too yeah. those are yeah, sure but uh, I, I do like a cream filled donut branch uh the old fashioned glazed or plain either way that, that always makes me happy i think they're the best for dipping in your coffee nice yeah. nice yeah. choice for that yeah nice since that. it's cream filled donut day <laughs> you're right i'm gonna go with um i don't know like lemon cream or sure. um those are those are delicious. The raspberry Banana cream, cream. Oh, yeah. donut. Sure, yeah. sure, that's sure. delicious too. I remember making donuts back in the day, so this is kind uh, of like a you know right. pass for me. Uh, Boston cream donuts. I used to make donuts back in Condon's Donuts in Wells, Maine. Some of the best donuts right. in North America. Mm-hmm. Right on. Oh, How man. about them banana cream donuts though in Edmonton, Alberta? Though you got to know on the acreage, you was knocking them down. Ooh, ooh. You got to know that. I don't know that I've ever had like the banana cream donut, <laughs> but now I feel like uh, compelled <laughs> Might to, have go to search out, it out to go out and find some. The banana cream is real. Let's see other holidays this week. Uh, tomorrow is. Eight track day. Do you guys remember eight tracks? Man, Man mom. You, you, you guys. I James Brown. Just a little too young for eight tracks. Just a little game. bit. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. I saw them around I, hanging, gathering dust, but never used them. I grew up with them. <laughs> um, we honestly, I don't. I think my my dad's car had one for a little while, but basically, as soon as the cassette tape came out. Uh, the cars that we own, they all had cassette players. So the eight track, I, I recognize and appreciate. But I don't See, recall. Ha- I don't awesome. recall having like the the, the cartridges. The eight track was awesome because you could choose one of four songs. Oh, you, you, could, you could. I know you could pick between all four of you know. Like, yeah, great you know, granny nice. used to have that thing <laughs> popping. Sure, <laughs> sounds like great technology in my opinion. I remember when I, I, was, I get the playlist going after and after. James Brown. I remember when I was a kid. I would try to in the, in some way DJ of like. Start this one and stop that one and start this one and try to go back and forth. Did the pop? Did those yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did that shit. You know? Baby, baby, baby. Then it became famous. <laughs> See, tomorrow is also felt hat day. Oh, oh yeah, man, you got to feel that. Yeah, man. man that, uh, you know, if your hat is felt, it's a classy hat. Man, you got to know hats. That's true. Sure. Huh, that is ball, very brother. true. Sure, sure. Gotta protect that noggin. Like, sure. <laughs> funny enough, like I'm creating up my own days too. Uh, oh I, yeah. Yeah, up in yeah. Canada, I'm helping out throw on the. F- the first international uni Sundance right outside of Calgary. So I'll be helping and I'll be sun dancing next year. Right on. Gotta check yeah. that sun out. dancing, like um is it the opposite of rain dance? Like are you trying to be like do you do it in the winter and it's a ceremony. Oh, so yeah? it's a ceremony where you build an arbor and you put a tree up and you give thanks. So I'll be dancing from sun up to sundown. That's just cool. And going wow. through that, working with one of my mentors, Bill Bursky, who's an author, and he's really helping me out through a lot of my, my journey. And also I just started the Canada International Screenwriter Summit. I saw that. Which will be in August, end of August, too, you know. Shit getting real. You know, it's going up. Yeah. Let's see what else we got going on. Uh, this week on um, Friday, we can celebrate International Dot Day. Connect the fucking dots, yeah, huh? man. <laughs> anybody, dot have, did anybody have a favorite <laughs> dot? Yes, dot from Animaniacs. Sure. Yes, there you go. Good one. one. That's a good one. Yeah. She was great, man. Uh, dot is short for Dorothy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Right, it okay. Is. What? It, Don't know any Dorothys. <laughs> that that is one of those names that ha- it's kind died of kind out. Of, well, I but I believe it will be coming back. I, I believe the generation behind us, the hipsters, they, they have really tried to, to grab onto some of those old names. Like I, <clears throat> I met a, f- uh, a couple that has a little daughter named Loretta, and that is an old school name. That's my grandmother's name. And I mean, yeah. I, there was no one in my school anywhere around me age-wise that has that a, as a name. I no, mean, some, name, some names deserve to go away. Okay. Like? Loretta. Okay, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> No, that's, that's not really nice. <laughs> Let's see. Also, uh, Saturday brings us National Cheese Toast Day. Yes. All the God time. Damn, cheese that is toast such a is Canadian day. Sizzler. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> the best fucking cheese toast in America. It, it is really good. Um, now, this is very similar. I'm a big fan of the Cheddar Bay Biscuit. Yeah. Cheddar oh. Bay Biscuit. From um, Red Lobster. Man, like, <laughs> honestly, like, it, it's better than the seafood they have oh, there. Man. Like, I can just go there and eat a ba- eat, yeah. eat those things. Uh, can I get you anything? No, just another basket of the of the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, Sometimes please. Sometimes that's the best stuff, right? Extra butter, yeah. With a big old, big old glass of that Trony Tron with the cranberry sauce. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep bringing biscuits, you bitch. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> All right. Sunday, uh, we're going to put this one on you, and we'll see if these guys uh, jump in also, is a uh, national... Um, how do they call it? They call it. Uh, where is it right here? 
God damn it. Tattoo Story Day. Tattoos, tattoos. I see you have a few tattoos. Yeah. Any Anyone you want to tell a story about? Oh, man, my favorite tattoo of all. All right. That big-ass Boston B. Well, Manny Ramirez run me that motherfucking oh, two sure. G's. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Got that sure. blaster on the front of my throat and became a fanatic since then, man. I mean, any team making you money, I mean, shit, you got to run with them. Sure, but yeah, man, how has that gone over in Pasadena? Well, there are people like, hey, man. You know, I like, mean, they don't say nothing to me because, you sure. know, I'm, I'm, I'm a known guy in Pasadena. Sure. You know, so sure. they're not going to sure. sure. question me about sure. any tattoos. Sure. Wherever I go, they don't question sure. me about my tattoos. Patrick, you got tattoos? Yeah, I got a couple tattoos myself. But my favorite one would be uh, my first tattoo. I got it with my best friend back when I was 18 years old. Uh, it's a Chinese symbol for life, fate, destiny. And the date that's Halloween, 1031, day of heart surgery. It's, oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a very, very meaningful thing. Sure. Uh, and it's, it's helped guide me to who I am today. Sure. Uh, how about you, Brian? Yeah, I got a couple of them. Uh, my favorite is the first one I got as well. Uh, I'm a bit of a romantic, and uh, uh, I had a very uh, – uh, the, the uh, comic book, The Sandman, yeah. uh, the uh, Seasons of the Mist, in which he re <coughs> he's given the key to hell, and, he has to, and he's the one who has to decide who will – be the new ruler of hell so uh, and it's just awesome <laughs> it's this awesome oh. ancient looking key and i had that tattooed on my chest above my heart so uh eventually eventually there'll be a keychain that's added with the woman that uh, gets the key to my heart it's so. amazing it's amazing what what you know media can do and influence people sure. and mm -hmm. on their body mm -hmm. this is where I, this is what we do in general and this is where i think we're blessed to be in that position of creating that influence on a lot well, of people on sunday i will be walking down the street of colorado with no shirt watching all these ladies watching my tattoos <laughs> celebrating a good yeah. you, sure. it in, you know uh, what i mean you know what man i um i've never got a tattoo like um i've i, uh, I, I, I don't like almost? anything enough i've never liked you know anything what? i can enough. i can think of one thing that you might actually get okay, on I, I, can yeah, think of, yeah. I can think of like a, a couple but okay. what, what do you got I, I think i could see you getting sc put on you yeah, uh, on your yeah, arm yeah, you are you know, you swinging you know I, I used to love uh usc right like i used to i, I, I know man <laughs> I, I still <laughs> enjoy it I, st I still enjoy man, it. you're fanatic bro but i know but my <laughs> grandpa who is like the person that i watched all the games with has passed and now i have a hard time watching the games because i think about him too much i still enjoy it and stuff but i it's actually kind of hard for me okay oh, um, man. Well, maybe no, out of that's, respect that's to beautiful. the man so oh, yeah. but what, what what are the ones that you think you could okay if get? i if i had to get something i would get the rebel insignia from star wars uh, okay you're such a nerd you know, okay I, know, I, can go with that. <laughs> I can get that or i could go with like the wwf logo the like, old school the old with school the, the, like the, like the, the gold that. ones that, that aren't the the, scri the scribbly that. ones I could go in back to the days of roddy piper hell yeah oh og definitely well i'm gonna go on and bring this back to you know I don't know how the hell y'all skipping over these tattoos, man. Now, what y'all going to be doing on Sunday? You're going to get tattered on Sunday. We're going to take you oh. back. We're going to take you back. Holy shit, they didn't have that. We're going to get the squad blasted. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 Somehow, uh, yeah, that, that's, I, I, I'm, a, I'm deceptively uh, fast and uh, slippery. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it'd, be, it'd be hard to catch me, man. It'd be hard to catch me. Like, you could trick me with some beef stroganoff, but that'd be about it. Uh, okay, we've come to the end of our show here. Like, uh, actually, we've kind of gone into overtime. Uh, one more time, guys. Uh, where can people learn more about both of you? Yeah. You can check me out on SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram at Channel PH. And you can check me out on Facebook. Get at me. A-N-T-T-H-R-A-X-X. -X. That's Anthrax from Pasadena. 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 No. Calgary, uh, Alberta, Brent. swinging. You can find me on Facebook, Brant Thoman. And uh, I, the, my Twitter is uh, hashtag uh, uh, Brant Thoman, but I never use it. So go ahead and do whatever you want. Uh, I probably won't pay attention to it. Sure. <laughs> uh, as always, you can go to jakesshow.com, and you can find out whatever's going on in my life. So um, just go there. Uh, I'm not giving any free things to Facebook or any of those people. I'm going. Sure, sure, dig it, man. Thing, uh, thank you so much for coming in, yeah, guys. guys. Much, yeah. much appreciated. Oh, and um, that's the end of another oh, great Grand Theft Audio. Really we'll awesome. be back next week. Um, <laughs> I think we have Lenny Schmidt in next week. Oh, sweet. Uh, nice. Yeah, so that'll, that'll be, be nice to have him back. Yeah, so thank you, uh, thank you guys for thank watching. You again for and having us. we'll catch you uh, next week. Take care. Bye. 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 I choke weed that'll close your eyelids, your girlfriend choke dick, all in the projects, anthrax, nairine like a tambourine, pills skin from your face like tangerine, true verse me, what's the motive of the concept? <laughs> <laughs>